Recording started. What's up, everybody? I'm Brandon Quinn, Sports Soccer Brandon. On this Friday evening, let me talk about SmackDown, which just ended. This SmackDown was actually pretty good. It actually built to backlash, which is happening tomorrow night. They are in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I will give this SmackDown some credit. They did build a lot. They did build very well. The crowd was super hot all night. They've been in Puerto Rico for almost like 10 years. Um, this show was actually really well done. Some of the big things on the show, we had the LWO kick off the show, and then Dom and um, the Judgment Day come out to interrupt. We also had the match advertised from last week of Karen Cross versus Shinsuke Nakamura. We also had um, the match. Uh, we didn't have – that was the only stuff that was announced, and the Bad Buddy was also announced – He's at the end of the show. We'll get to that. This show, at, let's get right into it. This show kicks off with the LWO come out, Ray, Zelina Vega, and uh, Cruz del Toro, Joaquin Wild, and Santos Escobar, the LWO. They come out. They cut a promo, mainly in Spanish. It was actually a really good promo. I actually give them credit for that. That was really fun. Didn't understand most of the promo. Ray was going in and out of Spanish a lot for the promo. But basically, that... Vega is going to beat down Rhea Whipley. And, you know, he, they were just happy to be in Puerto Rico. And, she, you know, she's a hometown girl, all that kind of stuff. So that was really good. And then Judgment Day coming out. This is Dom or Dominic Mysterio, Rhea Ripley, the SmackDown Championship champion, and uh, Finn Balor. No day in Priest, but we'll talk about that more later because that actually comes into play a little bit later on in the evening. Um, this was ultimately a very good little back and forth. Dom pretty much called his dad, hit Ray a deadbeat dad, and just kind of giving him, they gave him all that heat, which Ray think, uh, Dom's getting some weird heat right now. He's probably one of the few people that can get a lot of heat on some things, and you're like, this heat's insane. Why is he getting so much heat for, you know, little things that are not even, um, little things that are not even, like he has one one or two words and he just gets heat. Like people are just booing him out the building. Uh, he finally gets to his promo base. And he's just saying, you know, uh, Rhea is gonna beat Rosalina and you know beat her up and you know and Ray's like, if you you want to fight, I can fight you again tonight. And then Dom's countered with, you know what? Let's do a tag mixed tag match. And that's where we get the mixed tag match for later in the evening, which is the main event of Ray and Zelina Vega versus Dom and. Rhea Ripley, then they, uh, uh, the judgment they leave the ring. Before they leave the ring, though, Dom gets a cheap shot on Ray, and then we have like all the LWO gets towards the rope and start uh, jaw jacking with Judgment Day. Then we, then we uh, cut backstage. We see they do some video package stuff for, um, Last couple weeks on SmackDown, and uh, t- last couple weeks, last couple weeks about everything that's going on with the draft and everything. But we see the uh, we see the OC is going to versus the Viking Raiders. So they come. That match was about to happen before that match. Though we also get a little bit of a backstage thing where we see them. We see more of what's going on with the bloodline. And the what the bloodline is mentioned because they are, are there, so that's something that will they get to a little bit later. But they do mention they're there, uh, Jimmy and Jay and the Usos, or Jimmy and Jay, and then Solo, and kind of recap that whole saga before the match. They recap saga even though we don't see Jimmy and Jay in them yet, but they recap saga anyway, which is fine. Um, this gal, the OC versus the Viking Raiders, this was a fun match. This is one of the few matches I'm like get back and forth. Um, Eric. Pretty much was in control for most of the match. Then once Gals got in there, Gals pretty much took over. A um, little bit, a lot of good moves, a lot of fast-paced stuff. The OC wins with the Magic Killer for the one, two, three. Meechin takes out uh, Valhalla, which I like to wicked. AJ was on commentary. AJ sounded really good on commentary. So that was it. Was a fun match. Puts the OC over. The Viking Raiders are kind of in a weird spot because Valhalla doesn't really do much for them. They're trying to make them like. Viking, pe- Viking people, but they're not really Viking people. I don't know if that's because it doesn't really make sense for them to be Viking people, but they are Viking people. You know, I 
I, I think the Valhalla stuff doesn't really work. But then we get after that match, we get a the backstage hand finally of the Uso and Solo Sokoa. After uh, the backstage hand, Usos are kind of Jay and Jimmy are just kind of talking to each other. Jay Jimmy asked Solo, "Are you ready to do what we need to do tomorrow night?" And as he's saying that, it's actually really interesting because you uh, Solo is just taping his finger and taping his finger to, you know, for the small spike. And uh, Jimmy, uh, Jay goes, your brother asked you a question. And Solo goes, I heard the question. I'm prepared. Are y'all going to be prepared what needs to be done for tomorrow night? And then Solo leaves. And Jay, kind of, Jay Jimmy looks kind of at Jay like, Why'd you ask him something? Like he didn't he didn't want to be talked to. It was like, hey, it's okay. So there's the tension there, but I don't think it's really been touted the way I think they should have touted it. But it's there. So then we get a it was, this was kind of weird. In a sense, like so Bianca comes out, or actually they recapped the European tour, which is actually really cool. They recapped all the European tour places they went to. So Britain. France, where in France, uh, people say, serenaded Seth for almost 12 minutes with his song. Seth Rollins is over, by the way. So much so, people just serenade him to a song, his interest song. That's not, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for somebody who probably going to win the World Heavyweight title. I'll get to that tournament in a second because that tournament was, that whole thing they're doing for that doesn't make any sense. But, um, so then as, as that's going on, we get Bianca Belair, who's a Raw champion. She comes out. She says, um, you know, she talks about, you know, after tomorrow night, I'm going to be the longest reigning uh, women's champion in the modern era. Right before she can finish that sentence, Damage Control comes out. Damage Control pretty much, Bailey runs her down. Bailey says, why are you being so cocky? All this kind of stuff. And then they beat her up three on one. Then you hear Raquel, uh, you hear Liv music hit, Liv and Raquel Gonzalez even up the odds. So they're all standing tall in the ring, which makes sense. But I would have thought you gave EO more of a reason to stand tall. Not really. Okay, cool. Then we get a we get a pretty Interesting match after that because we get the Street Profits versus, um, or we don't get the Street Profits. We get a Karrion Cost promo first, talking about Shinsuke Nakamura. Then we have the Street Profits come out for their entrance, and then it's gonna be Street Profits versus the Imp- versus Imperium. This match was super fun. Imperium was on the front foot from from the beginning. No Gunther, by the way. So Imperium's on the front foot. Imperium pretty much starts beating upon Ford. Ford takes a lot of punishment in the beginning. Dawkins gets back in the ring. Dawkins evens out the odds again, gets on the front foot. Giovanni Vinci hits this beautiful crossbody, almost slips to hit, almost slips off the top rope to hit it, but he does hit it. Beautiful crossbody. Then hits out off the other corner, hits a beautiful, beautiful moonsault onto Ford. But then in the end, um, Tree Pops get back into it. Angel Dawkins hits. Pay dirt, or I think it's called payday. It used to be called the payday, which is the spine buster. And then Ford hits the top rope splash. Even though he was on the second rope, he's like, you know what? I'm going to the top rope. And he went up top rope and hit the splash for the one, two, three. I love the other thing. The whole night that they were counting, the, the fans were counting the pins in Spanish, which I thought really was cool. Really interesting way of doing it in their own language. And just getting to hear that, that's really, it was, it was fun. They were done fun. Um, so Street Pops win because they'll be on SmackDown as of next week. Officially, this is the other thing about the show. This show had a lot of crossover, which was fine, but they were on SmackDown officially. Then we had um we had the we had a Cody promo. So Cody comes out for this promo, and as Cody comes out for the promo, he just basically talks about Brock Lesnar and why you know why what Brock Lesnar is all about, and he says you know I'm gonna start rebuilding my legacy here in Puerto Rico. 
no matter what happens, no matter what's going on, I'm going to get back to that championship. I'm going to win that championship. And it was actually a pretty good promo. It kind of just reinforces the fact he probably should have won at WrestleMania. But I'm not, I'm not going to get into that because that's a really divisive topic, but just divisive topic for a lot of people. But I think well, I think Cody should have won in WrestleMania because I think that would have felt that story a bit more better. But if we're still building to it and he's going to probably win in WrestleMania 40 or whatever, cool. I don't think he... I, I'll get to my picks, but I don't think he will. I think he will beat Brock, but I think the story would be better if he didn't. And then he builds up to builds up to beating Brock and beating um and beating everybody beating other beating everybody else along the way. So Brock's like the top, but he needs to beat other people along the way and then beat Brock to get to that point. Um then we had Shinsuke Nakamura versus Karrion Cross. This match was a match. I mean, Karrion Cross does a good match. I mean, he's a good worker. But Shinsuke Nakamura is so good in the ring. They Nakamura tries to go flicking Chasa once. Cross counters it with this beautiful looking like clothesline. Literally almost made Nakamura does a flip bump for that. That hurt. That looked like it's painful. Then Cross is in control, but then um at one point um crossing control Nakamura gets back up tries to put an arm bar doesn't get it tries to uh cross powers out of that powers him up for like a power bomb Nakamura blocks kicks cross then gets in the corner and hits the Kinshasa for the one two three he wins which I figured Nakamura was gonna get a win he's going to raw he needs a big win We'll see. We'll see what that does because I think the big thing is the title tournament, which will maybe help Nakamura get him something a bigger win. So let's talk about the title tournament. So they explained on SmackDown the title tournament is going to go this way. There's going to be two triple threat matches on Raw and two triple threat, two triple threat matches on SmackDown. The winners of each of those triple threat matches will face each other. So two triple threat matches, whoever wins those, will face each other on Raw. And then two on SmackDown, whoever wins those, will face each other on SmackDown. After that happens, the winners of those matches will face each other at May 26th um, Saudi Arabian show, which is um, Night Champions. The only thing is, which is kind of contradictory, Triple H said that that whatever whatever brand Roman's not on, the other will get the title, which is right. So Raw will get the title. But why are you having SmackDown people fight for the title when it's going to be a Raw branded title and you have so many competitors in Raw already to make this tournament? Unless you just want to do the cross-branded thing so people can be talking about it. Cool, but I don't think it's working the way they thought. I I don't mind the format format. I just think you should have just done it on SmackDown or on Raw. Done on Raw, left it on Raw. That way it's not a big deal. And you don't have to worry about trying to figure out what to do with it after the fact. Um then let I'll get into this. I think it's I think it was kind of crazy. I think I think it was kind of crazy that we're doing this tournament but triple threat matches, and then you the winners of triple threat matches get the Shot the semif- semifinals, so cool. Um, but we'll get into then we'll get into the end of the show. Uh, so we have Ray and Zelina come out, and then we get a promo from Matt Riddle with uh Sami Zayn and uh. Uh, well, we get we get we get Riddle and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens backstage. Then they're talking about what's going on with the bloodline. line. Riddle says, "Hey, the bloodline, line, you're like crumbling. Y'all don't have anything right now. Y'all have n- nothing to really do. You are y'all are a shell of yourselves." When Roman comes back, there's not going to be no bloodline left, left. And then Riddle's like. I feel like I'm not really talking that much. If I if I'm talking too much, please stop me. I feel like I'm saying, you know, I'm I'm not really 
I'm not, you're not saying much at all. And Sammy goes, Oh, you're good. You said everything we need to, we need to say. We don't need to say any more. I don't really like this story because it's not really it feels kind of hollow. And I only think it feels kind of hollow because what you've done prior. But fine, cool. We're good with that. Then we get to our main event, which is Ray versus the Ray and Lena versus uh Rhea Ripley and Dom. This match was fun. It starts out with uh, Rhea and Zelina Vega. Rhea, uh, Rip, uh, Zelina Vega tags in Ray. Ray goes on a little bit of hot streak against Dom, but Dom gets the upper hand. Dom hits some stuff. Then at one point, I think Dom's in the 619 position. Uh, Zelina is going to hit him with 619. Rhea stops that. On top of that, Ray, she goes and jaw jacks to Ray. Back and forth kind of stuff happening at this point. Dom hits some, they raise some quarter punches on Dom, but then as he's hitting the quarter punches, he miss, uh, he gets out the corner and Dom like taunts his dad, you know, taunts Eddie, does his pose and everything. And it's a good back and forth for a bit. And then finally, Ray gets the roll up win for the one, two, three. He wins, or Zuna and Ray win. Uh, then the rest of Gemma Day beats up on or beats up on Ray, destroy pretty much tries to destroy him. Dom or Damien Priest comes out, Priest comes out to beat up Ray as well. And as that's happening, then you hear the LW's music hit. As L, as, as the LW music is hitting, you see, uh, so so it's not LW's music, it's Bad Bunny's music, excuse me, hits, and then they all come out to attack. And I love how they did this. So the rest of LWO attacks everybody else in Judgment Day. Priest is standing at the pretty much at the end of the ropes, staring at Bad Bunny with a candlestick. And they go at it for a bit. And they finally clear the ring. Bad Bunny clears out Priest. They go up the ramp. Rest of rest of Judgment goes, goes up the ramp. And uh he gets the LW show from Ray. And he puts it on. That's the end of the show. Like I said, it's a pretty it's a pretty good. Ending the SmackDown, it builds up the street fight between Priest and Bad Bunny, so I'm not too surprised by that. Um, this is going to be a pretty predictable backlash card, so I'm going to run through it right now. But overall, I would give SmackDown maybe a three out of five, three point five out of five, three point five out of five. It's a middle of the road show. It's nothing like amazing, but it did what it needed to do. So backlash, we're going to have the Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair versus Io Shirai. I think. Bianca Belair wins that. She surpasses the modern, the, the most title reigns, women's title reigns in the modern era. Then you have, uh, then you have Rhea Ripley versus Zena Vega. Rhea Ripley is definitely winning that, but I think Zena gets a good showing out of that. I think she gets a couple like pitfalls and hopefully maybe get one or two things to hopefully maybe get through. So I think Rhea wins that. And then, I think the uh, I think the other I think the other match is really kind of interesting. Seth versus Omos. Seth has to win that because if Seth's probably going to be the first world heavyweight champion on Raw, Seth needs the, the win. Omos really doesn't need the win unless you're going to have Omos win here and then Seth gets the win back during the tournament. No. Uh. I think the, I think the other, I think the other thing, I think the other match is really interesting is your U.S. title match with Austin Theory, uh, Bobby Lashley, and Bronson Reed. I think Theory, re, I think either Theory retains or Bobby Lashley wins because Bronson Reed's going to Raw. I, I think, ultimately, I think Theory retains that pretty easily, and then we have the six-man tag of the Bloodline versus Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. And Matt Riddle, I think the what? I think the Sami Zayn. I think the Bloodline wins here because I think Kevin Owens are in the morning twice. If you let the, so I think they win here because then I think your main event will be the street fight between uh, Bad Bunny and Damon Priest. I think Bad Bunny wins that street fight. 
leaves the crowd home happy. Ha- leaves the crowd heading home happy. Bad Bunny gets a big win. He does. I think he's going to earn that. Um, that's pretty much all the matches. Like I said, it's a pretty predictable card outside of maybe one or two things. The only thing I'm kind of like hedging my bets on is the bloodline versus Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Matt Riddle because I can see the bloodline winning, but doesn't further that story with Rowan being mad. Or I can see seven. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn winning, but they've already won like three times in a row from that point. I think if that's the case, the only I think I think Jay or Jimmy take the pen. Jay takes the pen. Um, but overall, I think it's gonna be a good show. I hope you, you enjoy this. I'm um, gonna start doing these live with um, or video versions, so I can put them on YouTube as well, so you can go through them. There's one news item that I want to talk about sports wise. That was official as I was watching SmackDown. Pops on my phone from ESPN.com, ESPN, that Texas and OU have officially announced that they are going to join the uh, Southeastern Conference in football, SEC, SEC, in July July 1st, 2024. They are forgoing the $50 million they would get the next two seasons and not getting any money out of that, but they make a good amount of money anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's going to be official as of July First, 2024, so about a year away from that pretty much now at this point. That was mainly the other big story that came out that I saw this afternoon. Other than that, mainly just keep with the wrestling. We'll see what happens at Backlash tomorrow night. I'll be writing down my stuff for review. I'll do the review either that evening or sometime Sunday. Probably going to be Sunday, most likely. But I do thank you for listening. I do, I do hope you enjoyed, and I hope you're here for next time. See ya.